Let's go to our panel now. Former Kremlin advisor Alexander Nekrasov joins me from London. And former Assistant Secretary of Defense Larry Korb is in Washington, D.C. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us here on the Newsmakers. Larry Korb, let me begin with you. Is the U.S., the Trump administration, correct in wanting to pull out of the INF? No, it's not. Uh, there's no doubt about the fact that Russia has been uh, v violating the treaty, but the best thing to do is to negotiate with Russia uh, over what these uh, disagreements are, as well as extend the New START agreement to tw uh, that expires in 2021, and see what you can uh, what you can work out. But if you get out of it, you will legitimize what Russia is doing. They're claiming they're not violating it. So if you get out, then they can go go ahead. Uh, with uh, continuing to develop uh, these uh, weapons, which are a violation of the treaty. Alexander Nekrasov, Larry Korb says there's no doubt that Russia is violating this treaty. Is that how you see it? Well, uh, uh, the American side always uh, says, like, uh, says that, and uh, without uh, many facts, they, uh, they are claiming that Russia is violating this or violating that. If you recall how they... Uh, went out of the ABM treaty in 2002, they simply made up a pretext that they need the, the systems, uh, anti-ballistic missile systems, because of a rogue state. They knew perfectly well that the so-called rogue states like North Korea or Iran, they didn't even have the capability to attack the United States. But they insisted that, no, they have to build this protective shield to protect Europe, to protect themselves. It was a blatant lie, but they did it. And they, I think uh, the ABM Treaty was one of the cornerstones of uh, international security and nuclear disarmament. And uh, they just simply walked away. So they are doing it exactly in the same manner. They are also saying that because China is not in this treaty, that's why it's worthless. Mm -hmm. It is not. China could have been joining this treaty, and that's a very simple way out. Okay. Uh, and that's, but uh, that's no, I don't see any logic in yeah, this. Yeah, and that's interesting. And you bring up an interesting point, because Larry Korb, a lot of people feel that these agreements are completely obsolete. During the Cold War, yes, it was the Soviet superpower and the United States as a superpower up against each other. All this time, the Chinese were impoverished, right, and building themselves up. So whether it's INF and these ground-based nuclear missiles, medium range, or it's new start and the long range ones, whatever that may be, the context is very different in 2018. The Chinese have been doing their own thing because they've not been bound by any treaty. So both the United States and Russia have to start again, have to think of a new reality. Isn't that the truth, Larry Korb? Well, there's no doubt about the fact <clears throat> that China has developed these uh, intermediate nuclear nuclear forces, and some people have used that as an argument for us getting out of it. But really, we don't need to deploy those type of weapons uh, in the Pacific. We've got enough uh, weapons on our uh, ships there to, to deal with the situation. But I do agree that we should now bring China into the negotiations, as well as other countries like Iran and, uh, and North Korea, because they're developing this capability uh, as well. It's not as critical for the intercontinental ballistic missile because it's really only us and Russia. And I agree with uh, my colleague here. We shouldn't, we didn't need to get out of the ABM treaty. And I think it's important to keep in mind that the person who drove that was John Bolton, who was then in the State Department under President Bush. And he's the one that's trying to undermine these arms control agreements now because he just doesn't believe in arms control. Mm -hmm. Let me bring in Thomas Callender now, who's in D.C., a senior research fellow at the Conservative Heritage Foundation who focuses on naval warfare. Thomas, you heard some of what preceded you. Are these treaties worth saving, such as the INF, or should the U.S. just get out? Uh, thank you. Uh, I think arm, you know, arms, effective arms control is in the U.S. and uh, the world's best interests. However, uh, to be effective, you know, both parties must comply uh, to that, and they have to be enforceable um, going forward on this. Right now, the U.S. is the only nation prohibited and complying with its obligations from developing and fielding intermediate range uh, conventional 
ground-launched uh, crews or ballistic missiles, and we're ceding a significant military advantage to not only Russia, but China, North Korea, Iran, to be able to defend ourselves and our allies. Alexander Nekrasov, the opinion from the United States, where Larry and Thomas, I guess, slightly disagree, but agree on the fact that the Russians are cheating, is that Russia's been getting away with murder, I guess, over the past few years. And why can't that be the reality, that that's what Russia's doing? It's cheating on this, and it's developing these missiles because it doesn't quite care about the treaty. Doesn't the United States then have every right to say, well, we're not going to play ball anymore? Well, it's a, it's a very simple thing to accuse another side. But there are inspections. There, there are satellites uh, observation, surveillance. You can easily, easily find out what is going on. The American side and the, and the West generally they're always saying things that are happening around the world, in Syria, Ukraine, whatever. They forget that the satellite surveillance is now everywhere. It's very difficult to avoid detection when you are actually uh, uh, sort of conducting some sort of a huge program which can be detected. I mean, the inspections were going on. So, so all of a sudden, all these inspections are useless. Now, I think, you know, the problem with the West, generally, is that they don't understand one simple thing. The World War III is going to be a nuclear war. And the, all the world leaders, all the uh, Western world leaders need to understand something. They will not get away from it. They will not escape. They will not have time to reach the bunkers they've built for themselves. And they, if they understand that, they will be completely different in their attitude. Right. They will Talk stop okay. the lying game. Okay. They will stop the blaming okay, game. Okay, Mr. Nekrasov. So when Russia sent those two nuclear-capable bombers to Venezuela following Venezuelan President Maduro's visit to Moscow about a week ago, <clears throat> what sort of message was Putin trying to send to the West? Well, these messages are sent by everyone. America sends their bombers and their... Uh, they're patrolling along the uh, Russian borders and so on. These are all symbolic gestures. They are technically diplomatic gestures with a military muscle added to it. There's a lot of confusion in the public uh, perception than when some submarine uh, goes somewhere or a ship. They never enter, by the way, the territorial waters of any country, but it immediately implies that it is some sort of show of strength and so on. These things are done by everyone. It's just like spying, you know? They're trying to show that Russia is the only one that spies on others, forgetting that America, Britain, Germany, France are spying on Russia all the time. So it's, it's a mutual game. We have to stop this one-sided, double-standard approach. Everybody does things that are sometimes not great things, you know, that are not, shouldn't be probably done. But it, it happens. That's the real world. But I, again, I stress, the world leaders need to understand the end will come to everyone, and them included, in World War III. Thomas Callender, on that very jovial note, I guess, <laughs> are we... I mean, is this the beginning of a new arms race? Because people talk of this all the time, but is, is this the real deal this time around? I mean, so I don't think it's the beginning of a new arms race. I think it's uh, an arms race that has already been going on. Uh, this, the U.S. has been prohibited uh, from participating or responding uh, to these increasing threats uh, by our maintaining our obligations to the INF Treaty. Mm -hmm. I mean, Russia, in this case, right, has already fielded several battalions of the uh, 9M729 ground launch cruise missile. China has deployed you know, hundreds of inter-range uh, ground-launched ballistic and cruise missiles that uh, threaten the U.S. and our Indo-Pacific allies. Uh, Iran, North Korea are, are working very rapidly to develop uh, increasingly long-range uh, missiles. Mm. So I think it's it actually in the... That's already been going on. The U.S. getting... Coming out of the treaty mm -hmm. and being able to uh, field... Uh, ground launch versions of some already air and sea launch cruise missiles we have, I think would uh, hopefully send the appropriate message to Russia that um, and bring them back to the table to negotiate uh, an updated INF that is more enforceable. Um, look back to, you know, the 80s with the original INF treaty 
It wasn't until the U.S. deployed the Pershing twos in Europe that brought Russia to the table uh, to negotiate in the first place. So I don't think it, it's an arm race that's already been going on, and the U.S. and our allies around the world are at a distinct military disadvantage right now. Larry Korb, you mentioned uh, Mr. Bolton and what he likes to do, get out of a lot of these um, uh, global institutions that the United States has signed up to. Is that at the heart of all of this? Is it just politics, and does it have nothing to do with weapons whatsoever. People look at the track record of the Trump administration, getting out of the Iran nuclear deal, getting out of the Paris Climate Accord, getting out of NAFTA and TPP and so on and so forth. This is just the weapons version of it. They don't want to have anything to do with it, no more, no less. Well, it's a combination of uh, uh, Ambassador Bolton and uh, President Trump. He does not like any agreements negotiated by any of his predecessors, whether it's the Iran nuclear deal or uh, the, uh, the, 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 cl the climate, climate, climate accords. So that's one factor. And then, of course, Ambassador Bolton, as I mentioned, he wanted us to get out of the ABM treaty. He doesn't like the uh, <clears throat> INF treaty. He doesn't want to extend New START. Now, let me make an important point here. The most dangerous thing is not these intermediate weapons. It's the long-range ballistic missiles. And the Russians have not only been keeping to that treaty, where we have intrusive inspections, but they want to extend it. And I mm -hmm. don't understand why this administration won't extend it, because that's working. And by the way, this whole thing about the INF, George Shultz, who was, I had the privilege of working with when I worked for Ronald Reagan, he says what they're doing now is the wrong thing to do. You ought to go back to the negotiating table, work on it. And this thing about all these other countries, we have sea launch ballistic uh, intermediate weapons that can deal with any of these uh, any of these threats. And this whole idea now, I as I mentioned before, you should have a you're going to have a new arms agreement. I think it, it would be great to bring China in, in, primarily bring China into it. But this whole idea that you do this and it's going to improve security. Listen to George Shultz. He worked for Ronald Reagan. He was part of negotiating this, and this is what he says. Yeah, on the flip side, Thomas Callender, let me get your opinion on this. There are those who said, well, okay, it was all well and good and symbolic that Obama and Mr. Medvedev got together and they agreed to shave off a few hundred nuclear weapons here and there, but both of them still had thousands of nuclear weapons, and both countries still spent billions of dollars in maintaining and upgrading their nuclear arsenals. So the status quo was just a facade to make it seem as if we're not on the verge of complete annihilation, but was that really the reality? Um, I don't think so. I, I, I agree that, you know, obviously it is the, at a world level, um, right, the, inter, the intercontinental, both... Uh, sub-launched and uh, air and land-launched uh, cruise mi uh, missile, ballistic missiles, nuclear missiles, are uh, the biggest uh, a threat to, to the world in that regard. And I agree. As far as we know, Russia is still in compliance with New START. Um, they've been, although they and the Chinese have been rapidly modernizing their nuclear forces, uh, the U.S. is fine in, in a position where we have to do some modernization of our uh, strategic nuclear forces. But if you look at, at, at Russia's stated uh, military strategy regarding the tactical nuclear weapons, of which uh, this deployed miss, ground launch cruise missile can be one, um, they've repeatedly stated that if a war erupts in, in Europe, they will use tactical nuclear weapons uh, to achieve an effect. And right now, um, the U.S., we don't, we don't even have something that could be a deterrent of an, mm -hmm. an equivalent response. Okay. We got rid of all our tactical nukes. Right. And so I think bringing this back, this possibility, actually will further deter Ru Russia from using them. Okay, so very finally, Alexander Nekrasov, does the United States have the right to want to defend itself in Europe, on the European mainland, from Russian tactical nukes? Well, I think the United States and NATO oh. countries uh, have made a crucial mistake by moving their forces to the Russian border. I think a lot of problems have arisen from the fact that NATO uh, moved eastwards very quickly. It is now on the borders with Russia. That is absolutely outrageous. That changes the whole pattern of uh, a possible conflict uh, on the European territory. I think the Americans and the Westerners generally have created this dangerous situation when Russia will have no other choice 
but to use nuclear weapons, tactical ones. The Americans, if the Russians would have done the same and moved their troops to their borders, let's say in Mexico, the Americans would have probably started a nuclear war. So excuse me, it's very rich of the American representatives to say how they're going to defend themselves when they have their troops too close, way too close to the Russian borders in Europe. So that's the main problem. They need right. to think very carefully what they're doing in Europe. Okay, and we appreciate that perspective. And it's almost a different discussion with regards where the borders are and where the limits are. And we don't have time to get into that, but maybe next time. Gentlemen, Alexander Nekrasov, Larry Korb, and Thomas Callender, I appreciate you joining us here on the Newsmakers.